Hey everyone. Welcome to Love and Stamps. I am Meg and this is uh, the Love and Stamp Studio. So you're watching Maker Mornings with Meg and today's project will solve a big problem for you. If you are the person like me who has uh, packages of designer series paper with all these little tiny scraps in the bottom of them uh, where you just cannot bring yourself to throw those tiny scraps away um, and you see them piling up and you think, oh, I should do something with those. So today's the day. You've been saving them for today. And we are going to make a great card with those. I actually super love this card. And this paper here, what you can see it, well, there's the scraps. Um, what you can see of it is the Nature Sweetness paper from the Nature Sweetness Suite, which includes two stamp and die um, bundles, actually. One of them is Lovely and Sweet. It's this very cool botanic set here. And the um, things, I had to look them up. I didn't know what they were. Uh, are almond almonds and almond flowers. This is uh, cocoa beans and this is vanilla. And so we are going to use these today along with the die set to make a great card and use up some of those scraps. So with that, are you already picturing your paper stash with all the little scraps in the bottom? Um, I have this one and then because I was you know, getting ready for today's video, I was pulling some stuff out and I'm like, oh, look, there's scraps in the bottom of this paper too. I should do this. So I'll, if I remember, I'll show you the beginnings of that card um, here shortly at the end. So, all right, with that, hey, buddy, thanks for saying hi. I am going to flip my camera down and realize that I did not quite get it all straight before I started. There we go. All right, so this card um, is not complicated. It is going to use um, some portion of these scraps here. Let's see. I think um, it doesn't really matter which pieces you use. So look, there's, you know, one, two, three. I'll maybe go for like sort of a variety. I don't remember what's on the back of each of these. Uh, there we go. Okay, well, anyway, there's enough pieces there. And then we're going to use um, these pieces of designer series paper. Hey, Sue. So this er, cardstock, designer series paper cardstock. So this cardstock is just half of a sheet. It is five and a half inches by eight and a half. And you can score it if you like to. I don't mind just folding this direction. Uh, you can use a bone folder. I know lots of people prefer that. And then the card mat for this size is also really simple. Hey, Kelly, happy pre-Friday. Hey, Tanya. Uh, it is four inches by five and a quarter. And so that is going to layer on there like that. Now, one of the things I like to do with a really pretty stamp set with lots of ornaments like this or lots of um, great sort of detailed images is to kind of make my own background paper. So what I'm gonna do is take the large um, here, the Prunus dulcis, which is actually almond apparently, according to Google, and I'm going to ink this up and we're gonna just stamp here on the background. And what I'm gonna do is turn my stamp as I go. So I'm getting different portions of the image included on my cardstock. And there we go, okay? So now it looks like it was just cut out of a bigger piece, kind of make your own DIY uh, designer series paper. And then I'm just gonna take my pad here and wipe up the extra ink. There we go. And if you haven't seen this, I actually like to keep my chamois. This comes with a glass mat as part of the um, demonstrator starter kit bonus. And uh, I just keep mine folded up in the case with my purple um, regular stamp cleaner. Uh, my um, Stampin', what is that thing called? Chamois? Stampin' Chamois? Anyway, um, for cleaning stamps and surfaces and so forth. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and layer this here on our piece of pecan pie. So the colors for this are Pebbled Path and Pecan Pie, which normally I am a color girl. You know from looking at my stuff that I am all about bright colors and so forth. Um, my dear friend, Betsy Kreider, who's a fabulous demonstrator in Pennsylvania, uh, she likes to point out that brown is a color too and that it should not be ignored in the color spectrum of things. So this whole suite, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, Betsy's gonna love this. Uh, and I have to say, I've been loving it too, so. All right, next thing uh, is to put some of our scrappies to work. So we're gonna go ahead and take these and there's some script on here, so I feel like it kind of does matter if I put these upside down or not. 
Um, there's some direction a little bit to the gold there. And I'm gonna kinda try to get a variety of these papers. And let's see, I'll just do one more of that. So I'm gonna repeat that. So I love to use odd numbers for things like this. Um, with an even number, your eye likes to look at the two or the four and just sort of pause there. When you have an odd number, um, you are more likely to have sort of a roaming eye so that it gives you a little bit more, um, a little bit less like focus, uh, more motion to the card, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's part of why I like odd numbers. And we're going to bring up odd numbers again at the end when we get to the embellishments. Now, what are we going to put on this card? So of all these choices, these are the large dies here that coordinate with the um, stamped images. And so there's a coordinating die for each of those. Um, and I have used the um, big almond spray on all of my calendars this year. So I'll show you one of those too. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this vanilla element here. And so I'm gonna grab a scrap of um, basic white cardstock and set this here. Oh, there's two scraps there actually. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stamp this. And I'm just gonna use Pebbled Path for all of our ink on this project. So there is that. And then I also want to use this greeting here, this just sending a little bit of love your way. I feel like this can apply for so many different kinds of cards, really. There's no wrong answer to sending a little bit of love someone's way. So I'm gonna grab this on another piece of basic white and go ahead and stamp that in Pebbled Path. So somebody asked me, um, Teresa asked me on a Facebook comment the other day. She said, Meg, I noticed that you don't use um, the uh, mat here. You don't use your paper piercing mat when you're stamping very often. So I'm going to do um, take two seconds to talk about this paper piercing mat. First of all, you shouldn't need this when you are working with red rubber stamps. Um, when you think about the way a stamp works, there is the block that is the holder and sort of gives you the pressure point. There is the foam on a red rubber stamp, which lets it give some um, some give and some mushiness that uh, allows it to contact your paper very nicely. And then there's the red rubber, which um, has a little bit of give, but also um, has just really nice deep cuts in it. So you get a really good inking and a really good image. Um, so when you have this, you don't need a foam mat, a pacing, piercing mat at all. When you use a photopolymer stamp though, like Be My Valentine, sneak peek, this is what I'm gonna pull out at the end. Uh, the uh, stamps are, they have no foam layer. They're just that photopolymer. So what you want to do for that, if you're having trouble getting a good image, this is where you want to put this in your equation. It's basically gonna take the place of the foam that would be in a red rubber stamp. So when you mount one of these stamps, you're going to um, go ahead and just mount it right on the block, okay? You'll notice there's really no give in here. There's a little give from the photopolymer, um, but most of the give comes from the foam in this equation usually. So that's where you're gonna add in the piercing mat and put this under your paper so that you can get a really nice contact between the stamp and the cardstock um, that you're stamping on or the paper. Now, so this is what Teresa said, Meg, you're not using that mat with your photopolymer stamps. The reason for that is the glass mat is a really firm, flat surface with absolutely no give. And so what happens is um, when you stamp, it really contacts very smoothly all the way around. Um, also, my table here isn't actually wood. This is a piece of like pretty vinyl um, on a piece of Formica countertop. Uh, but in real life, sometimes we stamp on those white plastic tables. And I'll show you for a second. Those white plastic tables are great for being flexible, take them down, get them up. But the problem is when you have a big stamp, even with um, a red rubber stamp, when you push down on the table, it's pushing all the way around and the table actually bows underneath. So that's why sometimes you'll get, um, when you're working on that surface, you'll get that problem um, where you don't get good contact or the middle of your stamp, especially in a large one, doesn't work correctly. So in that case, that is where you can really benefit from having a firm foam pad, especially with a photopolymer stamp. Um, and the other thing you can do is have like glass mat. That is a great way to like equalize that table surface um, or just have, you know, a flat surface is a little bit better of non-give flat surface. So, all right, that was our mini lesson on uh, surfaces to stamp on today. 
And let's see. Um, oh, Betty says she loves the glass mat for um, stamping the photopolymer. Yeah, it is. I'm really kind of enjoying it. So anyway, um, with that being said, the only way for sure to be getting it right now is to get it as part of the demonstrator starter kit. Um, if you are already a demonstrator and you missed the pre-order that we had for it um, before the holidays, uh, hopefully there will be some available after celebration is over um, and you might be able to get that. They don't know right now if there'll be inventory available to get them, like to put them um, as a regularly available product for customer purchase or not. So if you are desperate to get one of these glass mats and the chamois, um, this chamois and the um, silicone mat that goes with it, then demonstrator starter kit. I like to call it the I want it all kit as clearly what you're going to need. So, okay, back to our project. So we're going to take this fun label here. I love the detail on it. It's got some extra um, sort of stippling uh, texture on it. We're going to go ahead and pop this on here. I use a piece of um, washi tape to hold that in place. We're going to pop our coordinating die here and add some washi tape and look through the magic of television. We've got our pieces uh, already done here. So I love the magic of television. I wish that it was like a real thing, right? Like, I mean, I guess the magic of television is real, but I wish that I could just, I don't know, snap my fingers and have stuff be done. All right, so let's look at how we might use these here. Um, we're creating a focal point, not really in the center of our card, but kind of towards the bottom right. And so I'm going to slide these down, actually, because I want them to show below our um, per, per, um, focal point here. And then I think I'm going to put this flower right up here. Now, there's two ways we could use that. So let's go ahead and do our strips first. I'm going to take the strips off one at a time and just pop a little glue on there. And I'm not gonna worry too much about getting them straight or even necessarily back where I had them. I'm also not gonna worry too much about getting uh, them glued all the way down. I don't care if um, they have a little bit of motion to them, like maybe the ends of them stick up a little bit. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, but um, I know they're not going anywhere for certain because this glue is amazing stuff, so. All right, I'm gonna move that last one down there. All right, so now let's go ahead and pop some dimensionals on the back of our tag. And whoa, two dimensionals, that's a lot for me, but that's what I picked up, so. And we're gonna pop that on there and that's gonna just trap a little bit more of those papers. And then um, we have our uh, vanilla. Now, I think this is absolutely gorgeous with no coloring at all. But we have uh, the chance to add some color to this. I know, I know, brown is a color. But we're gonna pull in some colors here. And I did some quick Google research. And vanilla bean flowers are yellow, white, or greenish. And so I pulled out lemon lolly as one of my colors. And then um, we have the light uh, lemon lime twist and then pebbled path as our dark. And I'm gonna pull you guys in here, hello. And we're gonna do a little bit of quick coloring together. And, oh, hi everybody who said hi in the meantime. So, hey Margie and uh, Mary Ellen, Shirley, everybody. Uh, so we're gonna go here with a light color first. When I am coloring um, with my Stampin' Blends, I like to start with a light wash that kind of covers the background and gets our paper saturated so that future colors will blend um, together nicely. So we're gonna do just, I think, the bottoms of these little buds here in yellow. And then I'm gonna take my darker colors, Stampin' Blends come in pairs, and I'm going to add some deeper color here in the center and is shadows underneath where we are working. And then these colors blend pretty well on their own, so I'm not gonna worry too much about going back. Um, but usually if you have a larger area, you would go back and you would blend the colors that you just put on since we just put on two colors. So now I've got Lemon Lime Twist. I'll put a little green on the stem there. And then I'm gonna take the darker of the Lemon Lime Twist and add, I know there's like a light for my camera there. Um, add some dark shadowing. Okay, and there. And now we have those gorgeous vanilla beans. This is very, Pebbled Path is a pretty intense color. So it's actually not gonna take much at all. 
to color this, but I'm gonna go with the lighter of the two and I'm not going to go back and add shadowing. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this here as it is. All right, there we go. So you have two tips for your coloring. You have the brush tip there and then um, the other end of the marker is of course the bullet tip. And for something detailed like that, bullet tip sometimes is a little bit easier, but I'm a brush tip girl, so anyway. All right, so now we're gonna take this and bring our card back in, and I am going to, wow, over um, saturated color here, sorry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a dimensional on the back here, and pop this here on our card. All right, so there we have our, our fun card there. All right, now I promised you cork rounds, uh, or promised you embellishments, and I have those here. Um, these are from this same suite, the cork rounds. They have adhesive dots on the background. Hi, Anne, so glad you could join us. Uh, so the, uh, and also if you're joining on the West Coast, I know it's kind of early there, so you totally get a, a free pass for coming late. It's no big deal. Uh, you gotta get your coffee, it's first things first, so. All right, so anyway, these cork rounds are from the Nature Sweetness Suite, and I wanted to show you these, but I also wanted to show you the um, cord that is part of the suite, because it is amazing too. And this is the cord, let's see. I'll just peel this off here. And where is the end? Oh, it's taped on, so that was, I was never gonna get that without the plastic off anyway. So this cord, it's kind of like, um, I'm. I don't think that, I think it's probably made out of foam, so uh, it, it's hard to describe, but it is dimensional and squishy. So I don't know if you can kind of see it squishing there, um, but it's got just a little bit of gold to it. It's gorgeous and will be really fun for all kinds of cool embellishments. So we'll come up with some neat things to do there. But these cork rounds are also dimensional and not in focus, but cork rounds are also dimensional and a lot of fun. So like I said, I love to do things in threes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop three of these on here, kind of two um, sort of bigger ones here to weight at the bottom. Uh, I don't know, I always like to bottom weight my cards. I'm not sure why. And then one lighter one up at the top. Now, again, we've gone with an odd number and uh, you could put, you know what, we could, let's go crazy. Let's put a couple more on. I'm gonna pop maybe um, a couple more on here. I like to mask them a little bit so that they um, aren't just like floating, um, so that they have a little bit more presence to them. There we go, I kind of like that arrangement. And so what we've got is we've got an odd number and we've got them kind of in an arc here that sort of draws your attention down and so forth. Now, these are real subtle. They don't jump out at you, but they add um, a nice effect there. And you can imagine that this would also be really pretty without coloring. And uh, But the best thing about this is that this card used up all those little scraps in there that we know we're all saving in our designer series paper packages. They're uh, not garbage, right? I wouldn't throw them away, um, but I also don't need to save them until they like pile up like dust bunnies in the corner. So um, I love having a card layout like this that really makes the most of that design. Now, or makes the most of that little scrap material. Now, I promised you one more versions of this. Oh, yay, I like, thanks Nikki, I'm glad you like it. And I wanted to show you um, the next version of this card. Um, so as I was putting some things away this morning, I was like, oh, look at, look at all the bee paper. It's so cute. And I have little bees, um, little bees kind of ready to go. And then I have all these little scraps here. So let's take a look here at this card. Um, I pulled out some of the scraps and made them little strippy pieces too, kind of this similar um, idea there. Now in the stamp case for this though, I love to keep extra pieces. So when I've finished a card um, that might have like some extra pieces left over, or maybe I tried some things and I didn't actually use them, I just save them all. There you go, life is better when you're crafting. I just save them all in my um, stamp case because then I know I have them. And look what was in there, all ready to go for us without even any extra work. And then these fabulous pieces of this honeycomb um, designer paper, or honeycomb embossed paper. So I've got a couple strips of that. 
And I think that this is going to be um, my next strippy card here. What do you guys think? Kind of like that. Maybe with a um, sweet sorbet card base and a petal pink background or vice versa. Um, but then clearly it's going to need a greeting, um, uh, all kinds of fun possibilities. You'll always be the one for me. Ha ha ha. Um, but I feel like it's going to need a, a horizontal strip there. Um, to be part of that. So I don't know, maybe it'll be Valentine card. Anyway, so this is on my list to uh, finish today for other cards. And then of course I have this fun um, background here because we used that large image here to make sort of that custom background paper. I think that I'm going to use this piece here, maybe on petal pink, uh, to stamp this background uh, behind our bee and so forth to give him some interest. And then, of course, I have to give our bee a tail. So maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll orient the card the other direction or something. Never mind. I, or you never know. I will uh, have to show it again in a future video. So anyway, hope that that gives you some inspiration to get out your scraps. Yay, Sue says she doesn't want to get her, throw her scraps away. Ah, ha, ha. Betty says it's like it was meant to be. I love that. You know me. All about the pun. So woo. Um, happy for the uh, happy for this pre Friday, as Kelly likes to call it, and a chance to kind of get our weekend kicked off. Um, my younger um, kiddo is at uh, the Illinois Music Educators Convention uh, for All State Honors Jazz this weekend, so or this late late this week. So we're super excited to go see him play. And uh, he's a very talented trombone player. I know I'm his mom, but I think he's pretty talented too. Um, so we're excited to go see him play and then all fun things. Uh, so whatever else is on your weekend, I hope you are very uh, excited also about getting in some crafting time. We have a lot of rain in the forecast, so that makes it really nice to be indoors and cozy and pulling out scraps from your card papers here and coordinating stamps that probably have goodies already packed inside them. So um, yeah, get some stamps and inks and uh, put some put some cards together to share with people. So oh, thanks for the congrats, Sue. So, all right, happy stamping everyone. Have a great day and I will be back on Tuesday with another Maker Mornings with Meg video. So happy stamping guys.